Hey everybody, this is Steven Totillo from Kotaku, and I wanted to show you guys The Witness, the excellent new puzzle game from Thekla, or more specifically from the developer Jonathan Blow and his small indie team. This is a game about drawing lines. Productively, you could say that's all it's about. It's a bunch of line drawing puzzles, several hundred of them spread across a really beautiful island, which you're going to see a bit of in this first hour of footage. But weird as this may be to say, I actually hope you don't watch the full hour. In fact, I advise you, as soon as you watch enough to think, this is a game I want to play, stop watching. Because I wanted to give people a flavor for the game, a sense of how it works, since it's kind of hard to just put that all in words. It's easier to show you guys. But I also think this game is best experienced when you're figuring out the puzzles for yourself. So I'd prefer you figure out the puzzles for yourself. Here, though, is some footage, and I'll talk you through a little bit of what's going on, just to give you uh, some guidance here. This is a wordless game, no tutorials, no uh, tool tips or anything like that. You just figure it out as you go along, and initially you're locked into this area. You only ever see the game from this first-person perspective, and the puzzles, as you see, are spread throughout the world, and they involve this locking yourself into place, uh, putting a cursor onto uh, a thing, and then drawing a line. In this very early area, we're just being taught the basics, that you start drawing the line in a circle, and then you draw it towards some nubby end point. And as you see, there's these wires that are connecting the puzzles, and they're taking us to this lock, and clearly we want to undo all three of these things so that we can draw a line, because the lock itself is a puzzle. So this is early and obvious. This is like pre-K level puzzle stuff. Um, like I said, there are several hundred puzzles in the game. My first playthrough, I did f more than 450 puzzles, certainly not all of them, uh, that you could do in the game. And that took me about 20 hours. This is my third time, actually, what you're seeing uh, of me playing through the beginning part of the game. So I'm able to go through it very quickly. And I do about 95 puzzles in this, this footage in about an hour. Uh, and... The rest of the game does not play at that pace. In fact, I don't think you would normally play at quite this pace. I'm not exactly speedrunning it, but you'll see that I, I know the solutions. So this one, this puzzle is one of the first ones that's teaching you a bit of a twist. So you see the other puzzles had one black wire going out of it. And you notice this one has two. That's a hint. The game rewards observation and sort of thoughtfulness about what you're doing. And so we could end the puzzle there, but you notice there's another end point. I know what to do here, and I knew that the lower endpoint is the one that I wanted. But what would happen if you s solved the puzzle with the other endpoint? It's sort of a question, right, that now sits in your mind. And any of those questions are worth exploring as you are playing the game. I'm not going to be speaking through most of this first hour of footage, by the way, but I do want to talk through some of the setup. Here, we learned about, well, in the other puzzle, we learned about two endpoints. And here, we're learning about starting points and the idea that you could have more than one of those. If you were to trace uh, either of these starting points, you'd find that one of them gets you to the end, one of them doesn't. If you've heard about this game, you may have heard that it's very difficult, that it's amazing, extraordinary, and if you're watching it now, you might think, hey, the graphics look good, but really just drawing lines through mazes, is that really something to get super excited about? If that's all it was, I'd say no, although, Paradoxically, that is all it is. That's what the puzzles are. But what you're about to see over the next little bit will show you some of the ways that the game begins to not just teach you rules, but then twist those rules around or test your, your knowledge and your understanding of those rules. This is a game where, as I said in my review, the collectible is knowledge. You're not getting items, you power-ups and what have you. But you're learning. You're learning systems and rules, and you're figuring out how to apply them to more and more uh, tricky puzzles. I was going to say complex, but that might give you the wrong impression. Like, you saw that maze puzzle, and we just did the, the top exit there. And you might think, oh, well, the tougher puzzles are going to be like four times that size. They never really get much bigger than that. But they wind up having more and more symbols on them, and they wind up looking more and more complex. And you have to figure out as you play, well, what does this symbol mean? What is the rule that I'm being asked to follow here? And trust me, they, they are constantly trying to trick you as you think you know what the rules are, and then they turn it around. There's not a lot of story to the game. Uh, you're going to see a little bit now of how they handle some of the, I don't even know if I want to call it narrative or 
sort of idea presentation in the game. But we had we'd f- solved that puzzle uh, going up the top exit, and it had created that yellow power line, or lit it up, and it enabled us to go outside, open that gate, and we're able to go around the periphery of this starting area, this castle on this magnificent island. And as we go a little bit further, you'll see some of the scenery. This is other parts of the island, and there are puzzles packed throughout the island. And even finding the puzzles is a challenge in and of itself. Um, I'm Going back through this uh, in a second big playthrough, I found so many puzzles that I missed the first time. Now, here's one that is going to follow different rules than ones before. It still has a starting point and an end point, but now we have these black dots. Also a green background. What could that mean? What does that signify? Uh, the black dots, you probably can surmise what the rule is for the black dots. There is a training section that teaches you this, and you'll see what I mean in a little bit about a training section, but that it's, in and of itself wasn't all that hard. There's these audio devices sprinkled throughout the game. Of all the communities available to us, there's not one I would want to devote myself to, except for the Society of True Searchers, which has very few living members at any time. Albert Einstein, 1924. So that's how the game expresses itself verbally. Uh, Most of the way it expresses itself, though, is through the gameplay itself, which conveys certain ideas about how we learn things, how knowledge works, how ignorance factors into what we do. But it's subtle. If you're not interested in that kind of thing, you can ignore it. It's not that in your face in the game. Here, by the way, we've got the dot puzzles again. We have the broken line part of it, which is something we learned about in the opening area, not being able to pass through. And we still have a destination point in the top right. And so what I'm trying to do here, obviously, is figure out what is the way to draw one line through all the dots to the ending to open things up. You can think of that, I guess, as like a bonus area around the castle. Certainly not something you're required to do to finish the game. But let's get our bearings here. And we started in there and then worked our way out. Early on, uh, they're, des- they're drawing a pathway for you. They're very much guiding you. But the g- island is pretty much opened up to you now. And you can go to that bay that we were just looking at. Uh, you can go to the forests in the distance. You can try out puzzles that are in the sort of see the town that's kind of out there. You can try them. And for the most part, no offense, but I don't think you'll be able to solve them because they're full of symbols that you don't understand. For example, this one might stump you. It looks really complicated. There's a bunch of different circles for starting points. It's not as simple as, okay, I just pick a starting point and draw to the end. It doesn't work. So what do we do? What do you do about the black and white squares? Well, again, this is early in the game, so they're pretty much nudging you toward the answer, and the answer is going to involve these two sets of puzzles. If you see a row of puzzles, that's an indication that you're being taught something. So here, there's really not many possible solutions. And you can surmise that, hey, this row is all about teaching me about the black and white squares. And I think you can figure out now what the rule is regarding the black and white squares. So as you see each puzzle, try to think in your mind before I do it. How do you want to draw the line? Okay, so they add now we go to three by three. Same pattern, but the exit is in a different place. So we need to surround the white squares in a different way. Bigger grid, go around the white ones the way we did before, but now we need to hook in that other one. So there you go. Same pattern, but exit is in a different spot. That's not going to work. You see the problem, right? If I go to the right, I hit the exit, or I have to pass the exit. So instead, I got to do that. Yeah. Same pattern, exits in a new spot. This is is a bit of a, a trick. You change your strategy, and you actually put all of the white ones in one big loop. And that's the end. You don't get to the end of that, and then voila, you get some reward 
an achievement, uh, gold coins or something. Instead, you simply get the knowledge of, okay, I've been tested on this rule. I think I know how to solve puzzles that are going to have complex manifestations of this rule. Here, it's the black dots. Now, you saw me already solve a more complicated black dot puzzle, which is a way to also show you that you can sequence break here. You don't have to go through these puzzles. If you know the rule for the black dots, you don't need to do any of this. I could have just gone to the gray door and done the thing at the gray door since I know the rules without having done these puzzles. The rules get much more complicated as it goes on. They never, again, they never tell you verbally, hey, this is the rule. You're figuring it out as you do puzzles. And a lot of times I would encounter symbols I didn't recognize in really complex puzzles. And I knew I don't have a chance of figuring this out other than random guessing uh, what the solution is to a given this, this puzzle in front of me. So let me back off and then I would go to the other side of the island. I would be doing something else and suddenly I would see a simple row of puzzles that were clearly there to teach me how to learn, you know, how to use whatever rule governed that given symbol. Here we've got two origin points and I'm trying to figure out which origin point do I need to start from in order to be able to draw a line that goes through all the dots? And uh, it's, I should not have been going from that circle. This one's going to be the better one. So as I was saying, in the first hour uh, that I've played uh, of this second, really third attempt through the beginning, I burn through the puzzles. I do 90, I'm going to do about 90 puzzles, I think, in the hour. And I do advise you, like, as soon as you're interested in the game, turn off. But if you're not hooked yet, you'll see more complexity added to the puzzles as I go further in. Uh, these 90 are, I describe some as pre-K. Maybe some of them are also kindergarten level. They're super easy. Uh, there's one or two that on replaying it really stumped me, and I could not remember exactly how I did it. But this stuff is nothing compared to what's in the game later on. I'm not going to spoil any of that for you. I want you to have the f wonderful feeling that I did of figuring out a lot of that on your own. So if you're looking at these puzzles and you're like, oh, I could have done that. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, if, it was, if it was a puzzle I didn't think you could do, well, other than this one, I wouldn't show it to you because I'd rather you have the joy of figuring it out. So we now know the rules for the dots, and we know we have to go through both, so I can't start there. And we know I'm going to have to divide the black and white, so I can't start there either because the line can't switch back on itself. Same problem there. So process of elimination means that's our starting point. That's going to help because that now means we know where to start the line from, and we know some of the things the line has to do in order to cut through certain pieces and block certain pieces off. That is a bad approach because the black and the white were staying together there. So let's start that again and go through the black and white there, through those squares, and then we need to separate the, the, the two white ones up there from the black one. This, by the way, is helping us know which is, is the endpoint to use. So two of these things were red herrings in terms of endpoints. And so we have one final endpoint that we're going to. And loop through that and get around there. And we're through. That's the kind of puzzle solving logic you're using in the game, learning rules applying them to things that just moments ago looked impossible and suddenly they appear possible. You don't get the kind of rewards in this game that you might expect from other games. What in the world is that? I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I will pretty much end my spiel now. If you're into it, if you have a PC or a PS4 and you've got 40 bucks, I could not recommend this game highly enough. It's so good, so amazing. Uh, if you're not really sure yet, Keep watching. Enough from me. Just enjoy the rest of uh, the first hour or a first hour of The Witness. Have fun.